Hello and welcome to part one of my hopefully easy to understand guide to postmodernism. Uh, the reason I've split this video into two parts is it's quite complicated. So um, this video uh, or this part of the video is going to focus on the features of a postmodern product so that you can identify what postmodernism is and whether or not a product might be considered to be postmodern. The second part of the video, if you want to check that out afterwards, is specifically focused on the theorist Baudrillard, who you need to study for postmodernism at A level for component two. So the first thing I'm going to do is run through the basic features of a postmodern media product. Now, not every postmodern media product will have all of these features, but it's highly likely that they will have at least some of them. So a feature of a postmodern media product could be something like irony. Now, you may have heard the word irony in English before. Um, in media, we often think of it as meaning when the opposite thing happens to what you think should happen in that situation. So the very last thing you would expect to happen happens. Um, so, for example, if you think in humans, if you're studying that for component two for your TV uh, topic, in humans, the characters buy the synths because they hope the synths will make their lives easier. The point of buying a synth is for it to do your cooking and your cleaning and to make your family happier and to take away your stress. But the very last thing that should happen happens. The synths actually make their lives a lot more stressful. It ruins their marriage. Um, it causes problems in the home with their children. It puts them in danger. Um, so, uh, it, you know, it's ironic that the thing they thought was going to make them happier actually makes them more miserable. Another feature of many postmodern media products is parody or homage. Now, these are two very similar concepts, but there is a slight difference. So an homage is when a producer or a director includes um, kind of copies of things from maybe a genre or a style or a product that they like, but they do it out of respect for that original product. So, for example, in humans, there are elements that you might consider to be homages to previous sci-fi media products. The character George in Humans is played by a man called William Hurt, who originally played a creator of AI robots in a film called AI. So um, references to things like this um, could be seen to be paying homage to a previous media product. Perhaps they are just showing their respects for previous sci-fi products with similar narratives. Parodies are very similar. They still include references to perhaps a style or a genre or a specific product, but they do it for comedy value. They exaggerate it. They make it silly and funny to entertain the audience. So, um, for example, in Dizzy Rascal's Dream, he includes a parody version um, of Muffin the Mule, which was a real 1950s black and white TV show. So the original TV show was designed to be quite a serious kids TV show to educate them. But he's turned it into a joke. He's, you know, shrunk himself down to be puppet size and you've got puppets stealing TVs, which would be obviously very silly in the original TV show, it would never happen. So um, there's certain elements of a parody to that video. Bricolage is another keyword we associate with postmodern media products. It's a little bit like collage if you do art or if you've done art before. Collage is where you take lots of pictures and you put them all together to create one big new picture. <laughs> Just noticed I've got black all over my hands. Um, a collage is where you take one or more smaller pictures and you put them together to make one big picture. Bricolage is like that, but with um, audio or video products. You're taking other media products and you are literally taking them and putting them into your media product to make something new. So, for example, if an artist sa samples a music track from somewhere else, they're taking something else, putting it in their media product and creating a new one from it. So in Dizzy Rascal's Dream, he samples a track called Happy Talk by Captain Sensible. And it makes his song an example of bricolage, taking old products and creating something new out of them. Intertextual references is another key element to postmodern media products. Now, we have spoken about intertextual references before in previous videos. An intertextual reference is where the producer or director makes either a subtle or a very direct reference to another media product, a very specific media product. It could be a very direct, very overt intertextual reference. So, for example, in online media, if you are studying someone like Zoella and she literally says 
check out my boyfriend Alfie's vlogs um, or she literally has Alfie on the screen and she's talking to him. It's an intertextual reference to his channel and his vlogs um, and his media products. It's very direct. He's literally stood there or she's literally mentioned his name. So it could be a very direct intertextual reference. It could be quite a lot more subtle. Um, so for example, in the Tide advert for the advertising unit component one, um, there is a lady with a headscarf in her hair on the advert. And some audiences might see this as quite a subtle reference to a wartime propaganda character called Rosie the Riveter, which was often used on wartime posters aimed at women. So sometimes references can be very subtle and sometimes they're much more direct. Um, but it's um, very common to fill postmodern media products with lots of intertextual references. It makes the audience feel clever when they recognise them. Another key feature of postmodern media products is a fragmented narrative. Now, normally with narratives, we think of them as being quite linear. So they will start at the middle and they will go forward through to the end of the story. Um, but a fragmented narrative is where that is kind of broken up into chunks. And often those chunks are kind of moved around. So you might start at the end of a story and then go back to the beginning. And you might have flash forwards and flashbacks. Um, so it's very fragmented, chopped up, cut up and rearranged. Um, so, for example, in humans for component two, um, we see scenes of... Um, since uh, walking in a forest, uh, we see the scenes of Anita being bought. We then see some flashbacks, uh, presumably of Anita underwater, but we're not quite sure why or where that was from. Is that from the future or the past? Um, so the, the narrative is very fragmented and also it keeps cross-cutting between scenes. So we go between the scenes with Nishka and, and Leo and then we come back to the scenes with Anita and the family. And then we go and see um, other characters in other scenes, such as the police officer and his wife. So the narrative narrative is very fragmented, it's chopped up, it's moved around and it's all in a kind of funny order um, and that's quite common with postmodern narratives. Postmodern media products sometimes contain something called self-reflexivity. Self-reflexivity is where the characters in the show or at least a character in the show or the music video or the film um, are aware that they are in a media product. Um, so they talk to the audience, for example, they might speak directly to us, breaking the fourth wall. So in online media, it's full of self-reflexivity. Zoella clearly knows the audience is there. She knows she's part of a, a media product. So online media is just complete self-reflexivity all the time. It's harder to spot in other media products. Um, you could say in Dizzy Rascal's Dream, it's a little self-reflexive because he, he kind of is clearly aware that he's dealing with the audience. He breaks the fourth wall and, and gazes directly at us and sings at us. Um, and then he gets back in his kind of little box at the end. Um, so there's a certain element of self-reflexivity in, in many music videos. In terms of other products that you may have seen, just to make this clearer, if you've ever seen things like Malcolm in the Middle, Malcolm often talks directly to the audience and is aware they're there. It doesn't have to involve talking directly to us. It could be that they talk to the other characters about being in a media product. So if you've ever seen the brilliant series Community, it's a really great example of postmodernist uh, products. In the show, Abbott is a character that constantly refers to the fact that they are in a show and that they are characters. He talks about the narrative and he talks about being in a flashback. He talks about there being other timelines and ruining the ending of the show. Um, and so he as a character, although the other characters think he's crazy, is clearly aware that he's part of a sitcom. There are a few themes that are quite common in postmodern media products. And the most common of these is what if what if something were to happen in the future and how would we deal with that? So what if aliens landed? What if technology spiralled out of control? What if synths became a reality? What if we tracked everyone by their DNA? What if? And so I suppose a lot of sci-fi products by their very nature feature these themes and therefore might be considered to be postmodern. Humans as a TV programme has the theme of, of nature versus technology. You know, is it better to have the artificial synths and and, and or is it better to have a real human and what problems might it cause if synths were to become a reality in the future have a look at some of your other media products and some unseen products and try and work out whether they deal with this idea of what if or um, technology versus humanity because it's a very common theme for postmodern products to have 
many postmodern media products have veered away from uh, the reality, which is something we'll talk about in part two of this video, and they've gone towards um, things that are artificial or anti-real. Um, a good keyword for this um, is a lack of verisimilitude. Verisimilitude means um, the amount of realism that a product has, and you can remember that word because verisimilitude sounds like very similar to real life. So if something has a lot of verisimilitude, it means it's really realistic. If something lacks verisimilitude, it means it's it lacks realism, it's anti-realist, and sometimes it can even be surreal, making things that are impossible a reality. So for example, in Dizzy Rascal's Dream, he's living in a music box and he's shrunk down to the size of puppets and then he's dancing with a load of puppet people. It, it's surreal, it's bizarre. In Riptide, there are surreal elements if you're studying that. You know, there's things with, with knives going through hands and then there's money and there's fruit and there's guns. It's the combination of these elements is quite surreal. Um, it lacks some realism to it. Um, there's a lot of music videos that you may see as an unseen product, for example, that lack realism, that have these quite surreal, bizarre, impossible fantasy style images. So have a practice at looking at products and try and work out whether they have um, a, a real surreal element to them or whether they lack realism or lack verisimilitude. And if so, they might be postmodern. OK, so that was my brief rundown of the common features of postmodernism. Um, hopefully you can feel a bit more confident now in identifying whether a product might be considered postmodern or not. Um, for the most part, just so you know, postmodern products tend to be more recent. So from within the last couple of decades, um, an older product from the sort of 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, it's highly unlikely that they would be considered postmodern. Postmodernism tends to be something from the kind of 80s or 90s onwards. So just bear that in mind when looking at your products or your unseen text that you're using in lessons um, or to practice with. If you are interested in learning about Baudrillard's theory of postmodernism, including this very bizarre keywords of hyperreality and simulacra, then please make sure you check out part two of this video where I'll explain those as well.